Welcome to the Success Ascend. My name is Pat Mancuso and I am the host of our show. And today we have a very special guest and someone who I have followed for a long, long time. Um, in fact, when he uh, committed to us, I went back on my shelf and I found his first book. And so I am really excited we're here today with Bob Berg. So let me tell you a little bit about Bob. For over 30 years, Bob Berg has been successfully showing entrepreneurs, leaders, and sales professionals how to communicate their value and accelerate their business referrals. Although, although for years he was best known for his sales classic, Endless Referrals, which is where I first came across, Bob, it's his business parable, The Go-Giver, co-authored with David John Mann, I'm sorry, John David Mann, that has created a worldwide movement. While part of his four book series, The Go-Giver itself has sold more than a million copies and been translated in 30 languages. It is rated number 10 on Inc. Magazine's list of most motivational books ever written and was on HubSpot's 20 most highly rated sales books of all time. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of free enterprise. Bob, we need a lot of that today, for sure. <laughs> Believing that the amount of money one makes is directly in proportion to how many people they serve. He is an unapologetic animal fanatic and served on the board of directors of Fury Friends Adoption and Clinic in his town of Jupiter, Florida. So, Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pat. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Oh, listen, my pleasure. So, Bob, uh, before we get into, I know you're going to bring some amazing content to us. I always ask my guests, what's one thing about Bob that wasn't on paper that we should know? Oh, I don't know if it should be known or not, but uh, that I'm a I'm very much an introvert and prefer to be a loner with very, very small groups of trusted friends as opposed to being out in crowds. Isn't that interesting? And yet you've taught and impacted people at such a high level on how to build relationships. So it, it, it can be done whether you're an introvert, mm -hmm. introvert or extrovert, absolutely. which is uh, absolutely uh, true. So, Bob, I want to get into, we've got some great questions for you today, but I do want to ask you one question. The Success Ascent is about entrepreneurs and their journey of success. And obviously, you've had a lot of success. What would you share with entrepreneurs about your journey of success that you've learned or that maybe you learned the hard way? Well, you know, I've had a lot of failures too. And I think that every entrepreneur who who attains a certain level of success has those failures. And I think that's something very important for an entrepreneur to learn. Not that we should seek failures, of course. That's uh, That would be ridiculous. They they happen without our help, you know? They, right. And, and so, um, but we need to know that, they're, they, that it's part of it. it. It's part of the growth. It's part of the story. It's part of the journey. And I think what knocks a lot of people out of the business early, who early, who who would otherwise be very successful entrepreneurs, uh, isn't the failures or or how much you're told no at the beginning. It's thinking you're the only one having to go through these failures, and you're yeah. the only one being told no because you know we look at others who are already where we want to be, and we think, oh, it just happened for them. It just you know it was easy, and yeah. of course that's not true at all. They've already just been through all that, uh, all, all that stuff already and, and, Absolutely. you know, move through it. So if you had to give advice to your, to a 20 year old or 22 year old entrepreneur and some entrepreneurs even starting before that, what advice would you give to them today? If you knew back when you were that age? Well, I mean, I, I, I consider that there are three basic principles for, for entrepreneurial success sandwiched in between two major concepts. And the first concept is um, is desire, you know, to, to know what it is that you really desire to do, desire to accomplish, okay? Right. And, and um, uh, you know, Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich says, all great things, all great success begins with a burning desire. Uh, now that desire should not be confused with attachment. We don't wanna be attached to the results, but we right. still wanna have that desire, that all encompassing, this is what we want to do. Uh, so, so it starts with that. Then I think it, no, step number one is to, to seek out and find the system. Uh, learn how to do what you want to do because the, the chances are about 100% that what you want to do has already been done by someone else, probably many others. Yeah. And so you, you find out how they did it. You get books, you get audios, you watch videos, you go to seminars, you, you do whatever it is you have to do to get the information. I define a system as the process of predictably 
achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how to principles, the key being predictability. So if it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired results of B, then you know all you need to do is A and continue to do A and continue to do A. And eventually you're going to get those desired results. So it's it's seek out and, and you know find the information, seek out and find the system. Number two is to take action. Huh. Uh, knowledge without action is the same as not having any knowledge at all. Right. Yeah. So so we don't need to, to wait until we know 100 percent about how to do something, because if we wait till that time, we're never going to do it. Uh, it doesn't mean you should do something haphazardly, of course, but it yeah. means that once you have enough information to begin, begin, start, get started, you'll course correct along the way. Number step number three is be persistent or outlast the nose. And again, this goes back to understanding that it's just part of it. Uh, yeah. my, my great friends, Andrea Waltz and Richard Fenton, co-authored a book many, many years ago, a parable called Go for No, where they say that yes is the, an uh, yes is the destination, um, no is how you get there. Yeah. And so, uh, and it's a great book. And then, so, so you've got the first principle, which is desire. Then you've got, you know, find the system, uh, take action, uh, you've got be persistent. And then the, the, the last part of that sandwich, if you will, the last concept is belief. And right. that is belief in what you're doing, belief that, uh, that, that what you're doing will bring value to others, value to the world, belief in yourself that yeah. you have what it takes to make it happen. And again, it doesn't always start out like that. Sure. Sometimes the belief builds as you start to see those small successes, which is why each of these build upon one another. So we shouldn't reinvent the wheel is what you're saying, because the wheel is already there. We can already use that. And, mm -hmm. and I love the way that you put that uh, that conversation together. Thank so let, let's talk about the go-giver. I mean, what a phenomenon, what an amazing success. Where did it start? Like, what was the premise of the Go-Giver parables? Well, the premise of, of all of them is basically that shifting your focus, and this is really where it all begins, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. And doing so is not only a a uh, more fulfilling way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well and not for some way out there woo woo magical mystical reasons but actually for very logical rational reasons when you're that person who can take your focus off of yourself and place it on serving others discovering what they want need and desire uh, helping them solve and overcome their challenges and problems when you can focus on helping bring them closer to happiness people feel good about you people want to get to know you they like you they trust you they want to be in relationship with you they want to do business with you they want to tell others about you so so that's really the the premise the idea came from a uh, uh originally from a book i had out years ago called endless referrals which mm -hmm. was a book for entrepreneurs and salespeople who knew they had a great product or service, but they didn't necessarily feel confident or comfortable going into their local communities and sure. building kinds of relationships that would result in people wanting to do business with them and or refer them to others. So that was a guidebook, it was a system. But I'd always enjoyed parables and thought, wouldn't it be great if we could take the basic premise of endless referrals that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to others um, and bring that into a parable. So I asked John David Mann, who was the editor in chief of a, a magazine I used to write for, who even back then was known as a brilliant, brilliant writer. Right. And uh, I asked him if he would be the co-author and lead writer. And fortunately, he said yes, because I could never have done, I'm a how-to author. You know, I could never have done what he did with that. But he's just an absolutely magnificent, magnificent writer. And, you know, together, uh, combining on it, uh, you know, we were able to put together that, that first one in the story. We got rejected by 24 publishers first before the 25th finally uh, picked it up. Talk about persistence, right? I mean, yeah. talk about your model yeah. that you shared a few minutes ago. So, you know, one of the principles in the book is influence. And how does Go-Giver create influence both personally and uh, professionally in a business? Well, when you when you think about influence and that the term has been now so overused that there are 
just it seems like dozens of, of different definitions of, of what influence even means. So, so on a very surface level, influence can be defined as simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. Okay, by by definition, that's influence. Now, right. that's its definition, but that is not its its essence. Okay, the the essence of influence is pull, yeah. pull as opposed to push. As in, how far can you push a rope? And the answer is not very far. Well, at least not very fast or very very effective. Right. Which is why, you know, great influencers don't push. Right? They don't. They don't push their ideas on others. They don't push themselves on others. They're they're not push e. You never hear people say, "Wow, that Tom or that Nancy, she is so influential. She has a lot of push with people." No, Nancy is very influential. She has a lot of pull with people because that's what influence is. It's pull. It's an attraction. Yeah. Great influencers. What what John and I in our our the last book in the series, The Go-Giver Influencer, what we call genuine influence, right? Mm -hmm. Genuine influencers attract people first to themselves. Right. And only then to their idea. They do this again not through push but through through pull. And this pull happens when your focus is in the right place. See, I believe we need to be internally motivated but outwardly focused. So the genuine influencer always asks questions to make sure they're outwardly focused. Uh, how does what I'm asking this person to do uh, align with their goals? Right, who they are. Right, with their wants, their needs, their desires. How does what I'm asking this person to do, how does it align with their values? Right. And when we ask ourselves these questions thoughtfully, in uh, intelligently, um, uh, authentically or <laughs> genuinely, right? right? Um, now, you know, we come a lot closer to earning that person's commitment sure. as opposed to trying to depend on some type of compliance, manipulation, and, you know, those, those things. So, so this might be a little off topic. However, I think for me, it would be a great question to hear your perspective on because you are a person that that I feel has genuine influence and impact on people. And yet we have so many people in our world today who have these large numbers of people that follow them. They're considered influencers. Right. And, and yet they, they really don't demonstrate what you just talked about. So what's your perspective on, on those type of people? Uh, um, well, I mean, they do have influence. Um, you know, again, can they move a person or persons to a desired action? If you're, if, if a company is paying someone on Instagram, let's say to, um, wear some clothes sure. okay, or, or sure. that's usually what you, what you see, right. Yep. Or, or have a pro show a product or something. Well, is that any different from, you know, when, a, a years ago a, on TV, a celebrity actor who was a TV start on a TV show was selling, uh, aspirin the product. Sure. Okay. Right. Uh, Makes you know, sense. so it's, yeah, people like them and they want to, you know, they associate them with a good feeling. So, I mean, I think it's the same, it's really the same thing, basically. Yeah. Just okay, makes media. sense. Well, and I, I just, I, you know, I kind of thought about, well, it'd be an interesting question to hear your thoughts on. <laughs> so, is there is there any misconceptions about the go-giver? I mean, are there, people maybe hear the title and they feel like, well, I might get taken advantage of by giving. Right. Talk about your thoughts around that. Yeah, well, there are a few. I think there are a few uh, misperceptions, and I think it's usually before someone's read the book, they hear the title, The Go-Giver, and they think, well, that means I'm just giving constantly and it's self-sacrificial. You know, First, there's nothing about being a go-giver that is congruent with being anyone's doormat or okay. a martyr or self-sacrificial in any way. It's simply understanding that to the degree you shift your focus and place it on others, sure. that's the degree you're going to develop the relationships where, you know, business, friendship, relationship, what have you, is going to, going to take place. If a person um, finds themselves being constantly taken advantage of, and, and I don't mean, uh, you know, once or twice, or, you know, that's part of life, right? right. Unless we never talk to anyone or, or trust anyone ever, it's going to happen every so often, but it doesn't have to happen too much. But if, if somebody feels like they're a nice person, they're a giving person, and they're constantly being taken advantage of, it's important to understand that you're being taken advantage of not because you're nice, 
or because you're a giver, you're being taken advantage of because you're doing things in a certain way right. that create the context and environment for you to be taken advantage of. Yeah. And so it's important the per that the person sees this and that they then can can bring this from, from an unconscious type of situation to right. something in their consciousness. And they can try to determine why they're doing that. And there are many reasons why people will constantly allow themselves to be victims. Uh, and it, 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 it can be anything from a worthiness issue. It can be not having the tools. It can be wanting a sense of, uh, you know, the tools to be able to say no, or to be able to, you know, it, it can be, uh, a payoff of, you know, when you're the victim that kind of sure. gives you the excuse for not being successful, or it gets other people feeling sorry for you. And I'm not saying anyone does that or doesn't, I'm saying that, you know, if you're constantly being taken advantage of, and it's avoidable, which it is, right. and it's still happening, you've got to start to live in truth and ask yourself, well, why am I always involved? Why is it always me who's involved? <laughs> I was, on the last podcast, uh, the gentleman said, you know, look in the mirror because the problem's looking at you in the mirror. Like it's your problem and there's the, the solution looking at right. you. Right, and it doesn't mean that that person who took advantage of you was correct. Right, or, you know, right. What they did, they're not, of course. But it means that you've also got to take responsibility for certain things in your life that are a pattern and, and bring it into consciousness. Because it's only when we're aware of an issue that yeah. we're in a position to be able to effectively and constructively do something about it. That makes sense. So um, uh, this, this question, I, 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 you know, I had is, was there one piece of advice that you received before you ever knew anything about being a go-giver entailed that was a difference maker for you yeah i i would say it was probably it was close to 40 years ago um i was in i had been in sales for a couple of years and after a rough start because i had had no formal sales experience i started to really learn sales and was doing very well and about two years into my sales career i went over to a, a different company selling a a, a high ticket uh, product and I was really in a in a slump right from the beginning, and I couldn't seem to get out of it. And I was putting pressure on myself, which, of course, is the exact wrong thing to do. And I was focused on myself and making the sale as opposed to how I could serve, you know, the prospective customer. Sure. And um, I remember coming back to the office one day, and one of the uh, people there, he was not in the sales department. I think he was an engineer or something. He was a much, much older guy, and he he retired soon after that. Uh, but he was one of the, I didn't know him very well, but he was one of these people. He didn't say much, but whenever he did, it was always something profound. Okay. And I think he saw me as sort of Joe in the go-giver who would be written about 25 years or so later. He saw me as that young, up and coming, ambitious, aggressive sales guy with a lot of potential, but whose focus was totally backwards. Okay. And he said to me, Berg, he was a, a last name kind of guy. He said, he said, uh, Berg, can I give you some advice? And I said, yeah, please do. I, I need it. And he said, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Your target is serving others. Now, when you hit the target, he said, you'll get a reward. And, a and that reward will come in the form of money sure. and you can Great do with that money whatever you choose but never forget the money is simply the reward for hitting the target it ain't the target itself your target is serving others yeah and you know pat that i think is really kind of when it hit me that great salesmanship is never about the salesperson right uh, great salesmanship is never about the product or service as important as as those those are Great salesmanship is always about the other person. It's about those people whose lives you are trying to bring value to. It's really, when you think about it, it's about those people whose lives are better just because you are part of it. Yeah, it makes it. Yeah. It's so simple, right? I mean, it makes right. so much so much sense. Um, this one last one, I want to I want to probe because it'll be real interesting and kind of applying it today. So you make an interesting point that um, uh, in the book about uh, that's it's kind of totally congruent with human nature. Like, you know, like in our time today, like this go givers like human nature. Right. right. So, so talk about that a little bit. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the philosophy of the go-giver, everything about it, it ties into human nature. Um, you know, what are those elements of humanity that while we're all individuals, of course, what is it that we all have in common? Well, I think Dale Carnegie summarized it brilliantly in his, his classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. In fact, I think this sentence was the underlying premise of his entire book. And I once asked a Dale Carnegie instructor if he agreed, and, and, and he did. And that's where, where Mr. Carnegie said, ultimately, people do things for their reasons, yeah. not our reasons. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we realize that nobody's going to buy from us because we have a quota to meet, but rather because they believe that they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. Right. Now we're 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 acting congruently with human nature. Now we're living in truth. Now we're understanding that if we want this sale to take place, we've got to to lose, uh, you know, that self interest. Right. We've got to not even if not lose it, suspend sure. that self interest. Sure. Right. Sure. Suspend it and focus absolutely and entirely on that other person. Remember, as, as John David Mann and I say uh, in the Go Givers Sell More, the follow up to the Go Giver, um, money is simply an echo of value. <laughs> it's the thunder, if you yeah. will, to values lightning, which means nothing more than that the value must come first. The, the value must be the focus, the value you're providing another person, right? Right. Because that's why they are going to do business with you. Okay. And, and so the money you receive is simply a very natural result yeah. of the value you've provided. Just like the, the guy who told me about the target and the reward. Makes so much sense. So at, there's two questions I want to ask you real quick because I know we've got a hard stop here coming up. What's the best advice you've ever been given? I think the best advice I've ever been given wasn't really told it was something i observed okay and it's it's really the way my dad always interacted with others uh, my, my dad to me the master of people skills and i mean people met my dad and just loved him and so forth and it was really because of the interest the genuine authentic interest he showed in everyone else it didn't matter who they were it didn't matter their position he was always interested in them and their family and their work and their and it, it just you know and so I, I so I always say the 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 single greatest people skill right yeah. is a highly developed and authentic interest in the other person and I learned that simply through observing him. Yeah, well, and, you know, it wasn't directly said to you. However, it certainly impacted you. <laughs> so I'm going to flip that upside down real quick. What's the worst advice that you've ever been given that hopefully you didn't follow? And if you did, what did you learn? Oh, I remember somebody said to me, you know, if you want to make it in this world, you've got to be ruthless. Take no prisoners. Don't worry who you're hurting and and just, you know, and so forth. I, you know, I, I even I was young then and I still knew that was wrong it just yeah. it didn't, didn't seem to make sense so it's really interesting how often that comes up from people as well, well. What, do, what do we learn by watching movies and tv yeah right you see the two types of people the good people who are honest and hardworking, and and they're always being they're poor and they're always being taken advantage of by who the wealthy person who's mean and ruthless and heartless and has no soul right that's you know that's the message unfortunately that the world gives us and yeah. it's the message that so many accept and and i think that's why we've got to be conscious of that and always look at prosperity thinking study prosperity teachers you know people like randy gage and david nagel and sharon lecter and ellen rogan and bob proctor and ken honda you know and so many people who write speak blog but you know what have you on abundance and they're always talking about two things one there's plenty for everyone right, right. i mean there and there really is i mean oh, yeah. and that's why and 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 that that 99.9% .9 of the issue with, with not receiving this prosperity is unconscious. Yeah. And we've got to move that, that from unconscious to conscious because only then can we effectively deal with it. Well, the prosperity also is the ability to impact others, right? So when you earn that, um, when you have that opportunity to earn at a high level, then you have the responsibility to also impact and, and give. 
Uh, yeah, but I think it also works the other way. I think you you get you you attain that prosperity by finding ways to go. to provide a lot of value. So I don't think it's an either or. Yeah, you know, you 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 find ways to bring value to others, bring value to the marketplace, bring value to individuals, and you're rewarded right sure. with money, sure. and you're able to then provide even more value, give even more value, and receive even more and give even more and it, it's an upward spiral so so bob we're going to close out here i'd love a final thought from you um to, to kind of take us away i'm going to scroll um at the bottom here your go givers alliance uh website and mm -hmm. what would people get by going there well it's a it's a um group of people we call it a, a mentor online mentorship it's really a membership community we call it a mentorship community because okay. it's, it's so many people we all mentor each other Absolutely. you know so yeah so so we strategize together we connect we build great relationships and uh we just there's so much wisdom that goes that goes through that so uh yeah it's neat to uh to check out so what would be your final thought take us away um, I mean, I think a final thought is to just just always be asking yourself, how do I bring value to others? How do I give value to others? You know, how do I make the world a better place for someone? It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. It could be when you're pouring your coffee and someone else at the at the um, convenience store is is grabbing a cup. You just kind of look at them, hold the, the pot up and say coffee and you pour it for them. Yeah. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything spectacular or it might be something really spectacular. Yeah. But if you always just find ways to bring value to the world, um, you know, you, you'll never go wrong. Yeah. Well, Bob, I, I just truly want to thank you. And first of all, you've impacted my life. When I first got into real estate in the 90s, one of the books I was told to buy was Endless Referrals, and it's still on my shelf. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Um, so I just I truly have had an impact. And I also want to thank you for your time today. Uh, I know how busy you are and how, how valuable that time is. And for sharing with our listeners today, I'm just truly grateful for that. Uh, so thank you so much. Pat, it's my honor. Thank you so much. Yeah. So everybody, thank you so much. As I end every show, be happy, be healthy, be safe until we see you again. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much, Bob.